Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I have two short interviews we did with the Autel Robotics team while we were out at CES last week in Las Vegas. Now, you might be wondering why I've got two interviews, and I'll explain that now. Somehow it never occurred to me that bringing wireless microphone technology onto the show floor at the largest consumer electronic show on the planet would ever be an issue, but it turns out it's a horrible idea because my little microphone setup was competing for the same bandwidth as every other wireless device on the floor. And there was everything you can imagine at that show. I had robots, I had drones, I had digital signs, I had people walking around from major broadcast companies all competing for the same bandwidth. So we did a bunch of interviews that first day, got back to the hotel, I started reviewing the footage and realized I've got choppy audio, there's tons of dropouts, I'm not sure I can use most of this footage. So we got up bright and early the next day, raced back to the show just in the hopes that we could get another interview with some of the key companies we talked to the first day. We got to the hotel booth and they could not have been nicer. They were more than happy to talk about their technology a second time because again, they're flyers like us, they're nerds like us, they love talking about their technology. So I didn't want to scrap that first day's interview, so I did my best to patch it up and put it together. So the first interview you're going to see is with a gentleman named Jeff Powell. Now Jeff is a vice president for Autel and he's really an important guy because even though he didn't give up a lot of details, he really knows where this company's heading. He knows what technology they're going to release next, when it's going to be released, what it's going to look like. So I did my best to try to drag those details out of him, but he smiled a lot, which is a good indication that I was getting close to some of the facts, but he didn't give anything up. And I'll tell you why in a minute. The second day, we got an interview with a gentleman named Tim Matthews, and he's an engineer for Autel. And it was an interesting interview because I got a little bit deeper into the nerdy details around no-fly zones and broadcast technologies they're using for some of the new tech that they've got coming out. And it was a great interview. So I'm going to run both of those back to back. But my biggest impression about Autel, and I know I was really, really hard on them last year after CES 2018, because I went to their booth expecting to see like an XSTAR Premium 2 or some other new drone or some uh, iteration of that XSTAR Premium, and nobody expected them to come out with the Evo. And they announced it on the show floor at CES 2018. And when I saw this for the first time, it blew my doors off. I had to have this thing immediately. The problem was, in the booth, they showed three versions of it. They showed the version they released, which is the 1 over 2.3 sensor. They had a 1-inch sensor version of it. And they also had a mock-up for a 360-degree camera. So when I th saw all three of those, I thought to myself, man, we got some serious competition on our hands here. The other big guys out there better take note of this because if they're going to release all three of these models, they're going to own the market for a short period of time until everybody else comes out with a one-inch sensor or a 360-degree camera. Well, it turns out that not only didn't they release it right away, it was late, and they only released the one over 2.3. So I came down pretty hard on them saying, you guys had a great opportunity to take market advantage away from some of the other competitors out there because I'm a huge fan of competition. I think it's good for everybody. And they released the one over 2.3. In retrospect, I bought it, I fly it, I love it, I use it all the time. It's like my number two or number three drone when I'm out there flying. In retrospect, I guess I was too hard on it because it really is a phenomenal drone. Again, I've flown it over a year now, ever since CES or since it was released, and it's just tremendous. I really have a lot of fun with it. So this time I went in sort of expecting an Evo 2 or an Evo with a one-inch sensor, and they didn't have anything in the booth. So I was really disappointed to say, well, you guys come to the show, where's your technology? Here's the answer they gave me, and I really respect this. They said, we're not going to talk about technology that isn't ready to be released. When we announce a product, we're going to have enough stock built to ship it out to consumers. We're going to have it really close to the release date because it doesn't do us any good to talk about some technology and then have it delayed a couple of months before it comes out. It just frustrates people. And I totally respect that perspective. I really think that if more companies did that, we would all get less frustrated out there. And to be honest with you, there were probably 40 drone companies at the show most of those companies that I went and visit their booth, you could tell the paint wasn't even dry in the technology, yet they were talking about it being a prototype, it's going to be released soon, we'll have it out in a couple of weeks. I don't believe most of that technology will ever be released. With Autel, the sense I got from them was that their engineering teams pulled back and said, look, we got a lot of amazing technology that's coming out in 2019. Don't you guys go to the show and talk about it. We're keeping it under wraps until it's ready to be released and ready to be shipped. And I think that's a great thing. So there wasn't a lot of epiphanies out there from Autel, but I really got a strong sense of the company being responsible about how they're going to develop their technology coming forward. So when you hear something announced from these guys, which is going to happen soon, I think, you're going to be sure that that product will be ready to be shipped. So anyway, cool technology. I love it. I love the integrated controller. There are a couple of new products there. I talked to them about their commercial equipment as well. They've got a fixed wing. It's a VTOL. I didn't know it was a vertical takeoff device. I asked them in the interview like a dummy, do you need a big runway for this thing? And the guy goes, it's a VTOL. What do you 
are you talking about? So I should have done my homework a little bit better on the commercial side, but a couple of cool tech that uh, they talked about, and we'll get into that in the interview. So I'm rambling on enough here. Anyway, I had a great time talking to those guys. I want to thank Jeff Powell and Tim Matthews for taking the time to talk to me. Jeff, I'm going to be sending you an email because I want to get closer to your company and start reviewing your products. Because as I told you on the show floor, and I say here on the channel all the time, competition like this is good. I'm a big fan of the underdog. And if you're putting products out that are shaking people up a little bit, that's a wonderful thing for all us flyers out there. So expect me to get in touch with you. Anyway, here are the interviews. Thanks for watching. I got a lot more content coming from CES. So stay tuned to the channel. Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. I'm here with Jeff Powell from Autel. We're going to talk a little bit about their product mix today. Good seeing you, Jeff. You too. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Of so I'm in the Autel booth. Now, there's been a lot of anticipation about the next release from Autel, and I know you guys are hard at work on a lot of different products. I was wandering over there before and saw your commercial stuff, but everybody's asked about the one inch. So what do you think uh, is on the horizon for that? So the horizon for the products itself, we're working on a lot of different things. We will be releasing product, we'll announce product just in time of release. You'll see some things happening in 2019 that will blow your mind. That's exciting. That really is exciting because, I mean, I, I fly everybody's drone. I've got one of every model in my shop and I take them out all the time and I, they're like my children. I try to be equal flying with all of them, but I think competition is a really good thing. And when I saw this and that, I thought, smart engineers working on this, man. They've got people in the bowels of that company really working on technology. So I'm excited to see what you have coming. Do you have any kind of horizon dates and when we see some announcements? No, we're not going to release dates until the product's ready. So we've got, we've got a roadmap of products uh, for this year, for next year. Um, we will be releasing product this year. There will be something coming. Okay. Um, so, we're so working on a lot of different things for uh, solutions for different uh, different market segments. Okay. And so we'll be we're trying to target solution providing rather than just a platform product. All right, that's great. And and as disappointed as I am that you didn't give me a date, I totally respect that. One thing I don't like is a company starts talking about a product, talking about a product. A year goes by, nothing comes out, and then why am I listening to those guys? You can't fool me twice, right? The fact that you're being sincere about that and saying, we have stuff coming, it'll be in 2019, just settle down. That's a wonderful answer for that. Now, I'm going to ask you about the commercial market, because that's exploding with everybody. Sure. It seems like every company out there has got a commercial enterprise. DJI came out with their Mavic 2 Enterprise. Um, that's rescue space, which I think, for me, as much fun as I have as a hobbyist flying, you put a drone in somebody's hands that can save lives, it changes the game completely. Absolutely. So you got to be you got to be excited about moving into that market. Right? Absolutely. Okay. There's, there's a big market for us. It's one that we're really focused on. But you had ruggedized monitors for out in the field. Looks like you had telemetry information on a very large screen for some of your bigger solutions. Absolutely. Wow. So what, where's that all heading? That's all... So that's going to be more for the fixed wing platforms. And we'll okay. talk about how that rolls out over the next uh, year or so. Okay. So then you're playing in all those markets. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Boy, I'll tell you, I, uh, I'm excited. I'm smiling because I've tried to get the answers out of you. I really have tried to get the answers out of him, and he's not budging on anything, but I'm hoping that we're going to become friends very quickly, Absolutely. and we'll be doing some work together where I'll get some advanced product, and we'll review it on the channel like we do with everybody else. I won't make him commit today, I promise. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much it from the Autel booth. Stay tuned. Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. We're in the Autel booth with Tim Matthews from Autel. We're going to ask him a lot of tough questions, and we're going to talk about some possible future products as well. So let's get into it. Uh, last year I came to CES and I fell in love with your Evo. I was in the booth and I was blown away because I came here expecting the X-Star Premium to have maybe an X-Star Premium Premium. Sure. And I walked into the booth and you got a foldable drone, the Evo, really and yeah. blew my doors off. I, I spent an hour in your booth talking to your guys, your yeah. engineers were there about, where did you come up with this? Like this is a five-year project and you didn't have it, now you got it. Right. And I, I left the booth so excited because you, you kind of teased us with the one over 2.3 sensor, the one inch sensor, and there's even a 360 gimbal. Sure. So I'm thinking, we got some competition on our hands course, here, right? Yeah. You guys are going to really shake up the market with those products. And I know production delays take time, but I know you guys as a company really spent a lot of time around the engineering. You're not going to rush a product out and try to fix it out in the field, yep. right? So it took a little longer than expected. Sure it came out. The minute it was available, I bought it. I've been flying it pretty much awesome. every week. That's good Fantastic product. Good. I put you. it up against all the other products that are out there, and it's yep. probably in my top five, maybe even my top three drones that I fly. Awesome. So I know there's a lot of fans out there. Sure. So the big question for this show was everybody came expecting Hey, Autel's going to have the one-inch sensor. Of course. And we came to the booth, and there's no one-inch sensor. So can you give me a little insight on that? Basically, at this CES right here is we're really recapping what the year for 2018 was, you know, with the Evo and the updates that we did to it, and then also showing a lot of products that are ready for market or just about ready for the market. Okay. So instead of showing what could be or concepts or really far-out prototypes, 
then we're showing what's realistic and what that consumer can expect, you know, shortly instead of in the infinite future. Basically. All right, that, so. that's fantastic. Yeah. And and again, one of the reasons I like you guys is because. That, you know, I'm looking around the building and there's got to be 60 drone companies. Of course. Half of them I've never heard of. Yep. There's a lot of clones out there. And when you talk to the representatives, everything's available immediately. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe any of it's deliverable sure. at this point. So I love that you guys are saying, we're going to be honest. It's oh, not 100% ready. And when it is, we'll release it. Right. You guys will hear about it. We'll yep. take care of you. So I like that a lot. Um, all right. So as Autel as a company goes, I know that you guys pride yourselves on you know, sort of the local contact points and support and service. You can pick up the phone and call you, you get a guy in the exactly. phone, you yep. can fix it. A lot of your fans love that. They Good. love the fact that you stand behind your products, you're coming out with reasonable firmware updates that take care of their issues. Right. Um, the other concern I have with some of the companies, and I'm kind of on the fence on this one, is around the no-fly zones. Okay. A lot of companies yep. impose those as mandated. Sure. You guys are not in that camp yet, and I know FAA is changing a lot of the regulations and rulings about that, yep. but you're kind of in a watch and see mode, right? To see where that heads and... Yeah, exactly. So the, the way that we kind of see it is that we don't want to stop professionals from being able to do their job. Right. Um, so just like your car, we leave it up to the user to make the right decisions and we give as much info as possible right, to make an informed Welcome decision on you. that. Okay. So we would tell people where the no-fly zones are, but it's up to the, the pilot to be able to make that decision okay. on what they're going to use it. And that doesn't stop people from like search and rescue or right. police. It just uh, opens up first responders. So now they don't have to call up another company and then jump through a bunch of hoops to go and try to save somebody's life. I got you, good. I think that's a responsible position. I, I don't necessarily disagree with the NFC stuff. I think that I don't fly illegally, I think you don't fly illegally. Exactly. We're both flying responsibly, but there are knuckleheads out there that'll walk into an Apple store, buy a drone, yep. slap a battery, and then go fly over an airport, and then you and I have to explain to our family why you know drones are a good exactly. thing. Exactly, right? and you so, do see in the, in the industry a lot more technology to try to defend against that. Right. So then you can have sort of like the, both, uh, the best of both worlds, where you can defend a sensitive area, right. but then you can also have a product that you can use when you really need it to. I agree, and I think this the evolution that's taking place right now, we're kind of embroiled in it. It's a, in so many ways, drones have become this disruptive technology nobody saw coming. I almost think of them as like the cell phones 20 years ago, of course. when phones were, you know, with cameras, and yep. then people are like, oh, don't take that into a bathroom, exactly. and all the laws came up. And people got used to it after a while. So I think the public is way more aware of it now than they were. Of course. I think a little bit more amenable to us flying the drones. So that's a responsible place to be. Now I notice you've got a lot of commercial gear over there, and I've got some shots of your uh, broadcast gear and such. But I love that little receiver that you've got that allows you to to dual screen to both your remote exactly. and to a large HDMI. So if you're using this for rescue work, uh, which by the way, you've got the caution orange on there, which is great. Yeah, you, can yeah, you can easily see it and it also screams like a, a tool instead of a toy. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. So you have that like in a command center, and then you're flying it and the captain or the fire chief can tell them where to direct Anybody from first responders and broadcast use to somebody that just wants to share what's going on with the drone without having to be connected to their controller. And now you have the same sort of range that you do with the live deck as you do with your controller. So you can separate the two and put that signal wherever you want. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah I think it's a really cool product. And then I saw your large fixed wing craft as well. Yes. That thing's massive. Yeah, so Dragonfish has gone through quite a few changes over the past year. A lot more testing. Right. You can see that. It's got the motors in it. It's got the gimbal in it. All the electronics. Yep. A consumer type battery. Uh, definitely finalizing the specs and a lot of people are excited about that. It's a, it's a it's a lightweight option that holds large payloads, you know, being very efficient with the right, fixed wing and I guess it's really good for like surveying and exactly. doing property assessments and things really, like that. Really, I mean, just like the drone is industry, the uses are pretty much unlimited. Yeah. So whether you're using it on the farm or you're using it to monitor traffic, if you want to map a construction site, there's, it's pretty much unlimited what you want to I, do. I should have done my homework on it because when I asked him about it yesterday, I said, do you need a runway to take this over to hand yeah. it? He goes, it's yeah. VTOL. Exactly. Like, that's even cooler. You, you can take it off inside the booth, yeah, that's you know, but then you have that long range of flight. Yeah. Astounding. All right, so just getting back to the Evo real quick. Um, the, your new products are coming, so I imagine you'll continue the Evo line with other sensing options. I imagine you're probably working on other platforms as well. We're always working on lots of different interesting things. Okay. Uh, well, so as you can see, we've we've updated our booth. We haven't gotten smaller. We're still here, a huge yeah. presence. You're just one that, of the larger booths here. For exactly. Company, so we're honest. we're yeah. definitely still moving forward, and we're very very excited about this year. Fantastic. And you guys were uh, really early with the integrated controller. Yep. I know that some of the other companies had them, but they look like more bolt-ons. This was really kind of a cool feature to have there. Yep. I'm imagining your future products will have the integration as well. Uh, Hopefully. It's, it's been received really, really well I'm so sure far. And uh, I mean, you saw the industry do it a few times before, but with like the OLED, OLED screen, right. that size and how launchy or how quickly you can launch the Evo right. is, 
I think that was sort of part of what the difference was on it. So I hope to see it in the in the future as well. I, okay. It might even. I hope it becomes an industry standard. Excellent. To be honest, I, I think mean, it will. I a do. lot of people enjoy it. I to do have because that the customer experience is much better having an integrated device because exactly. you can control the firmware, the display, everything yep. is there. You don't have to worry about somebody using a six-year-old phone that doesn't run the app. Sure. Doesn't well, have the horsepower. Even, even if you just drop your phone or if you lose yeah. the cable right. and now you can't frame a shot. Absolutely. I mean, half of the videos that we've been releasing over the past couple of months were shot with just the remote. Right. So it's it's pretty impressive what Excellent. you can do. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm excited. I know you guys a lot. I'm a big fan of. Competition in the space, as I said to you before, it's I think very, very the more companies that have a cool product like this, drives everybody to be better and, it's and smarter. better for all of us. Yeah, right? it is, right? It yep. helps the price stay reasonable and keeps yeah. pushing innovation forward. Exactly. So thanks an awful lot for all you guys are doing. Thank and you. Uh, I'll say thank you. Uh, definitely. I'm Good gonna go talking to you. I'm going to give away a drone. So. Sweet. Look at that. They're giving free drones away. <laughs> thanks, guys. Right. Thanks, guys.